Hello, it is Wednesday the 20th of May. That means it's the eve of Ascension Day and tomorrow there'll be a celebration of Holy Communion uh, for that uh, high feast day of the Christian year. Today is also the feast day of St Alcuin of York, uh, who was a deacon and the abbot of Tours. And I'm going to read to you what it says in Exciting Holiness about Alcuin. Alcuin was descended from a noble Northumbrian family. Although the date and place of his birth are not known, he was probably born in the year 735 in or near York. He entered the cathedral school there as a child, continued as a scholar and became master. In 781, he went to Aachen as advisor to Charlemagne on religious and educational matters and as master of the palace school, where he established an important library. Although not a monk and only in deacon's orders, in 796 he became abbot of Tours, dying there in the year 804. Alcuin wrote poetry, revised the lectionary, compiled a sacramentary and was involved in other significant liturgical work. So as we prepare to pray on this day, let us pause for a moment and gather our thoughts and our hearts. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. We pause to bring before God our sins, our burdens, our faults, uh, as he promises to take them from us as we live forwards in his love and forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our psalm is Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may rest upon your holy hill? Whoever leads an uncorrupt life and does the thing that is right? Who speaks the truth from the heart and bears no deceit on the tongue? who does no evil to a friend, and pours no scorn on a neighbour, in whose sight the wicked are not esteemed, but who honours those who fear the Lord. Whoever has sworn to a neighbour and never goes back on that word, who does not lend money in hope of gain, nor takes a bribe against the innocent, whoever does these things shall never fall. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The reading, which is the reading for the eve of Ascension Day, is taken from St Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 20. If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the universe, why do you live as if you still belonged to the world? Why do you submit to regulations, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch? All these regulations refer to things that perish with use. They are simply human commands and teachings. They have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-imposed piety, humility and severe treatment of the body, but they are of no value in checking self-indulgence. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are, above, that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory.
The response to that reading is the canticle monk Demetis. Alleluia, the Lord is risen, alleluia, as he promised to you, alleluia, alleluia. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. As he promised to you. Alleluia. Alleluia. We turn again now to one of the sayings of the Desert Fathers and a short reflection on it. A brother came and stayed with a certain solitary, and when he was leaving he said, Forgive me, Father, for I have broken in upon your rule. But the hermit replied, saying, My rule is to receive you with hospitality and to let you go in peace. All the traditional monastic orders, even ones like the Trappists, that live in almost total silence, have hospitality as an absolute non-negotiable value at the heart of their rule. Even people who have renounced the world, as we might put it, will make every effort to welcome people into their midst, to care for them and nurture them for a time. If you read the writings of Thomas Merton, who collected these sayings of the Desert Fathers, and who was himself a Trappist, you become aware that, paradoxically, for those called to such a life, it is precisely by withdrawing into silence that they become united with humanity at large. Uh, and if you read Merton's diaries, uh, you can't help but notice that though he spent almost the entirety of his professed life on his own, his love for and his care for, uh, the world at large was something that just continued to grow and grow. Uh, it is a particular vision for particular people, this kind of withdrawal, but for them it is entirely true as it unfolds in their lives. And as it is for monks, so it is for all Christians in their walk with God. Any rule of life, which we could interpret as any way of observing the Christian faith as it's lived out by a person, uh, any rule of life that does not include as an absolute priority some kind of hospitality as you are able to provide it is not actually an authentic Christian witness. This hermit in this saying, devoted to being alone, knew that Christ required him nevertheless to see him in the face of other human beings and that this could only happen through hospitality. So the question for us is, how are we inviting Christ hidden in other human beings, into our lives? How are we making our homes a place where the children of God may find rest and then leave in peace? Short scripture from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 13. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. We come now to our time of prayer. We bring all of our cares and concerns, our hopes and dreams before our Heavenly Father. God of wisdom, eternal light, who shone in the heart of your servant Alcuin, revealing to him your power and pity. Scatter the darkness of our ignorance, that with all our heart and mind and strength, 
we may seek your face and be brought with all your saints to your holy presence. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. Come with the dawning of the day and make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. It has been wonderful as always to pray with you. I continue to pray that you are well and safe and look forward to joining with you again soon. Just a reminder, tomorrow is Ascension Day. There will be a service of Holy Communion uh, in all of the usual places. and hope to join with you spiritually uh, in that time of worship. Thank you.